impossible to tell the story of Lagos without talking about transportation in Nigeria's most densely populated state. Every day, millions of citizens ply its road in a frantic attempt to get from point A to B. Third Mainline Bridge is an important part of this equation, but in the last two weeks, it has gone from the major link between the mainland and Lagos Island to an obstacle course. Since the top layer of the bridge surface was uncovered through a process known as milling, trips on Third Mainland have become one and the same with heavy traffic, slashed tyres and in some cases, accidents. Some of the motorists told Pulse that rough portions of the road had caused damage to their cars. I was waiting for me and I was waiting for me to try to walk on the road. All those were galloped and they made everything look normal. It causes a lot of slowdown and it's causing traffic. It, despite the fact there's nothing at the front, but still. It's supposed to maybe when they're ready to make that repair, they do it immediately. Not that they open the place down for a very long time and they leave it there for quite a long time and are not fixing it back. Paul spoke with an officer of the Nigerian police who manages traffic on one end of the bridge and he disclosed that he and his colleagues were not given prior notice of the repairs. No, they have not informed us. If they inform us, automatically they will draft and post us there. You will see us. It's just like when an accident happened. Like you now, you go on the air, you tell us this is what is happening. Then they will draft us to the scene of the accident. We will go there. Because if you go there by yourself, that is illegal duty. Investigations led us to discover the Righteous Construction Company, an indigenous contractor, was executing the project under the supervision of the Federal Road Maintenance Agency. According to officials from FEMA and the Federal Ministry of Works, the initial delay was a result of a hitch from the contractor's end. There is a program we follow. Once it means, what we do is we don't allow it to stay too long. Once it means a particular section, then it does the asphalt to valley. But he has some challenges from his own hand. And that was why it was a little bit delayed. Not that we allow it to go. What we do is we put necessary caution signs, danger signs, warning signs to alert the motorists of what's going on. Accidents are not limited to roads where there, are, where there is construction or maintenance going on. We have accidents on roads that are okay also. So, so how long would this repair take go on? All this being you call, we are not supposed to stay for more than a week. So from the initial plan, yes. I'm talking about scraping, taking off some layers yeah, and all that. We gave the contract for 90 days. 90 days? 90 days, that's the maximum days he can stay and do the work. 90 days. And how long has it taken already? He has taken from the day he collected the award letter to now. Almost two months has been existed. So that's over 60 days? Yes. And you're assuring us that before 90 days? Before the, before the 90 days, we are off. While the work has resumed and there is an established date for completion, it doesn't change the problem that this episode has highlighted. There is a general culture of lethargy and inefficiency that follows infrastructural projects in Nigeria and no one suffers the effect more than the people who use these structures. Third Milan Bridge may well be fixed in the next few days, but there are tires, cars and frustrated road users that still bear the scars, however small, of those two weeks.